Hello, everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, April 21st. Our special guest today is Jennifer Regruth. Her topic is the April Featured Teacher. And your co-moderators are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffitt, Tammy Moore, and Paula Noggle. I will now turn the mic over to Paula, who will introduce Jen and ask her the newbie question. Well, good morning, everyone. This is Paula Noggle. If you hear noise in the background, that is because I am at attending Ed Camp NOLA today, which I'm an organizer for. But I am thrilled to be on to introduce my friend and good buddy, Jennifer Ragley. So it has been my pleasure to have met Jennifer on Twitter in 2011. That year, she joined us for fourth chat on Twitter as one of our moderators, where her infectious enthusiasm shines through our weekly chats. I was thrilled when we finally got to meet face to face at this in 2014. Jen and I have a standard tradition that we connect our classrooms during the first week of every school year as our first mystery location call of the year. Now let me tell you a bit about Jennifer. She teaches fourth graders at Margaret R. Brown Elementary School in Seymour, Indiana. Her career started in the fall of 1990 when she began her student teaching experience at Brown. The following school year, she was hired as a third grade teacher and has been at Brown now for 27 years. The past 19 years, she has taught fourth grade. She was recently awarded Educator of the Year for 2018 by the Seymour Chamber of Commerce. She's a Google Certified Educator, a Classroom Champions Educator since 2012, a Moderator of Fourth Chat since 2011, a Seesaw Ambassador, and a Tech Team Coach. She is truly an inspirational teacher leader, and it is my great pleasure to introduce Jen, my friend, my buddy, and my sister Minion to all of you. Jennifer, our newbie question that we're going to turn I'm going to ask and then turn the mic over to you is, what does Web 2.0 mean to you, and why do you use it in your classroom? Take it away. OK, Paula, thank you for such a lovely introduction. I, I love to relive some of those moments that we lived and um, when we met on Twitter and how we got together. So I appreciate the warm introduction. Um, that was awesome. So first question about the newbie, Web 2.0, um, using um, tools to um, connect with other classrooms has been a game changer for me. Um, I'm social by nature, and I think kids learn that way also. So for them to be able to connect with people in other classrooms or around the world and feel like there's more to life than just this tiny little room they're in, I think is really important. Um, Twitter's probably my favorite. You'll hear me talk about that during this presentation because I think it's been the biggest change and led to so many other things for me. Um, Skype and President and Google Docs have been awesome tools for them to share information, and I just can't wait to see what these guys have tools to do later. Everything's just exploding with technology and resources, but it's good to get them thinking there are tools out there that they can use and connect to other kids. So I think that has been an amazing experience for me. OK, so we're starting the slides. Um, the topic I wanted to talk about today was setting a climate for learners, because I think it's really important in this day and age with kids with so many different backgrounds and languages and culture and, and um, how much pressure there is coming down from state testing and teachers and admin on things, that it's going to have to be very careful when we're setting the climate for a learning environment for these kids. So. Um, she, Paula did a great job introducing me. So there's a slide here where I put some pictures um, of people that have started me out and encouraged me the whole way. Um, I was able to present at ISTE 2014 and 15 with um, some people that Paula was talking about. And she's not pictured in the picture with the blue shirts, but she was all there together with us. I think she got called away to another presentation. And there's a Cyberry Man and Nancy Carroll and some of my favorites. So 
there's some pictures of my family. I have two kids. And there's one of my uh, coworkers, Kim Crane, who saves my life every day. <laughs> so I had to include these pictures. They're from ISTE of 2014. And um, the first picture in the middle, or it's when the first year when Paula and Nancy and I got to meet. Um, it's very interesting. We'd been friends on Twitter, had not seen each other in person at all. And it was like uh, one of those reunions on TV where people are like running across the edge and seeing each other from far away because we were just so happy. We had hours and hours of Google Hangouts and we knew each other's families and hobbies and what we liked and we worked on school stuff and talked about personal things and just had a ball. So we were so happy to meet up. Um, there's another picture of the three of us and then down there was Steve Hargan. So Peggy George was in a picture with us uh, when we were there so I had to include that together. Um, I will say that Nancy's daughter, who is uh, 20, said to um, Nancy, let me get this straight, you're going to go to a city that you don't know to meet a person you met on the internet and stay with them in a hotel. So <laughs> that was kind of a funny thing. We said, yes, we are, but don't do that. It's, I know her from Twitter, uh, people on Twitter. So that was kind of an interesting little tidbit. But we are so happy to get together in person. Um, this is a resume when they were nominating me for Teacher of the Year. They had me get a resume, resume together. And um, I put this one together. It's kind of unique. And Nancy Carroll kind of threw the idea out and helped me line that up. I thought it was very unique and interesting. So I laid it that way. And so on the left, when I gave my speech um, for accepting the award, I included that I love uh, three things very much, and I get to combine them every day. Um, I'm definitely a people person. I'm definitely a tech nerd. And I like to learn anything new. So I always say to my kids, oh my gosh, if I had had YouTube and Twitter and Google, I don't know <laughs> what, would, what would have happened. I don't know. So I, I talked to them about um, how lucky they are to have information at their fingertips. So um, back to the topic, setting a climber to climate to create encouraged learners. I think it's important to note out it's not just for the kids, but for teachers too. Um, students need to have the physical climate and emotional climate where they feel safe and ready to learn and that's a, not a stress for them. But I also um, think for teachers it's important to have a physical climate and a professional learning network. So no matter what the situation in your building or your administration, what you're struggling with, there are people that reach out and are so warm and giving and smart and it just helps so much to turn it over. So I, I want to point out for sure that climate is important for both students and for teachers. And I know they always say teachers control the climate in a classroom, whether it's going to be a rainy day or a sunny day. And I think we sometimes forget to take care of that for ourselves as a teacher. You know, there are things we can do to help ourselves out. So I want to talk about those um, tips and topics today. So a couple of questions you can ask uh, um, if you're thinking about the climate in your classroom. The, um, the physical climate, like what do your students see when they walk into your room? So trying to see it through someone else's eyes, you know, kind of walk in your door and think like a kid and look around and just think about what they would see. And the emotional climate would be like how do they feel when they walk into your room? That would be the feeling they get, not just what they see in front of them, but what feeling do they get when they walk in? So I've named some um, points that I'd like to go over about the physical climate and the emotional climate. Um, as far as students, when they walk into your room, I'm sure they'll see the room arrangement, whether they're in rows or in groups or what the seating is like. Um, some of them will be looking for how accessible is the teacher. Are they easy to get to? Are they behind their desk all the time? Um, where are they in the room? They may check around to see if their work is displayed. If you put it up in the wall, it instantly becomes important to you, and then it does to them as well. So that's a strong point that I feel like kids look for in a physical climate. Um, comfortable seating, and this is something I struggle with because flexible seating is, is so fantastic, but I haven't found a way to get it completely into my, my room. But They'll be looking at comfortable seating. Is it all desks? Do they have a chance to go to tables? Can they sit on the floor or bean bags to see if there are choices for seating? Um, the schedule, 
uh, everybody wants to know, you know, when's your special and when's your lunch? Okay, after that, then they might check out <laughs> when some of the subjects are, but um, having a set schedule for them so they understand exactly what's going to happen that day is a good idea. And tech as tools, they may look around the room to see if you have a dot cam or if they're laptops or iPads. And tech is important to them. They're growing up in a place where they cannot possibly live and avoid tech, so they might as well use it to their advantage. That would be another thing in the room they were looking for. As far as the emotional climate, how do they feel when they walk into your room? Do they feel welcome? I, I try to stand at the door every day and greet, greet every one of my children coming in by name. I think that that eye contact and that greeting in the morning is really important. Or were they ready to learn? Does, you know, they walk into the environment and they feel like, ooh, I can't wait to take in what's coming today. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the self-regulation and leadership, like taking care of themselves and becoming leaders in the room. Um, there's, I have 28 kids this year, and if I tried to solve the problem for each of the 28 kids and all the problems they have, we would never make it. So very early on, I talked to them about everyone's good at something and no one's good at everything. So there are different strengths in the room. This person might be good at math. This person might be good at soccer. This person might be good at organizing. This might be good at helping. And we need all those people to make it run. So without hesitation, I talk to them about if I'm in a teacher group and someone needs help with their math and you know, you don't have to ask me to go and help them. You hop over to their desk. So if, you, if you can't solve it, find someone else who can. If someone's desk is falling apart and they're out and I'm with another student and you need to help them organize or find something and get it together. So it's not always about the smartest kid in the room. It's the go-to one. They have learned by now, I'll, I'm going to bet if you went around the room and said, what's this person's greatest strength? What's this person good at? What's this person good at? They would have absolutely no problem naming what every one of those kids was good at and it wouldn't be the same. And the big thing I, I talk about is when reading is not your gift, when reading is not your strong point, it does make your life a little rough because there's reading everywhere. There's reading in math, there's reading in social and science. So those people appear to be super smart if they're great at reading. But everybody has things they struggle with. So that's a, a big thing about them. And I've watched them grow into little leaders. And even when a substitute will have my kids or one of the special teachers, they'll be like, oh my gosh, these, these kids take care of each other. I didn't even ask them. And they went over in there and helped them do something. And the sub was like, I didn't have a lot to do. If I didn't know it, someone in the room knew how to take care of it. And I think that ownership and that leadership, even at fourth grade, is an important part of your confidence and how you're growing and the type of person you want to be. So um, I think that's a strong thing about the emotional climate. Probably the most important thing, in my opinion, is getting them to believe that they, they have things that can help others and they have things that are special about themselves. So um, that also has to go back to the top point that's in bold accessibility to the teacher. They always know they can come to me with a question and I would handle it. But they also know if they glance and I'm in a group or I'm one-on-one -on -one with somebody or I have somebody pulled over, it's better to just go find another student. And they're on topic. Um, Almost all the time, every once in a while, kids will be kids, but they look, they assess for themselves, they make a decision. If they see someone in trouble, they may get the person. Carson, you're good at math. Could you go over and help this person? So that's a joy for me because I feel like that's a skill they're going to need throughout their lifetime. So while I'm always accessible, I'm really happy that they take that on themselves and help each other. And we even talked about when you go to help somebody, you don't just give them the answer. There's a process in asking questions to get the other student to the answer. And so I would love, I mean, I would love for someone to interview my kids and see, maybe I'll do that before the end of the year and see what kind of feeling they have about that. But it's something I'm really proud of and I think they're very proud of too. Um, the last few points in emotional are understanding how the classroom works, um, how are transitions, how are people grouped, when do I go to this person, how do I act when I'm at a station. Um, what's the teacher expect of me? Um, if they understand it, they generally, and, and it makes sense to them, 
and you're not just doing it for no reason. If you have your reasoning and they understand it, usually they get it. I'll say it's school business and they go, okay, I get it. Um, confident when they succeed. And I should have added and they're confident to try over when they don't succeed, that perseverance part. And I'll talk about that with the topics on um, classroom champions in a bit also. For the teachers, for physical climate, a few questions you could ask are what do you see when you walk in your room and are there things you wish you could change? So there's a little picture of chaos on the desk there. That's, that's not what you see. But even the physical room, there's, is there, are the walls too busy? Are the desks how you want them? Do you wish you could clear your shelves? Wish you could buy tables? And your professional learning network, what's your support system like? And I especially added at your school and online because I know a lot of my support system who are actually on this chat with us <laughs> are very helpful to me. I have a question or I don't know or I need a resource or I'm stuck at a, with a problem. They're there. So over on the right hand side, um, that was one of our walls. When we were um, trying to encourage each other, everybody was supposed to put up a post-it note in the teacher's lounge saying something good about another teacher without signing it. And as you can see, it, it filled up really quickly and it was very interesting and enlightening and inspiring to go by and read some of those. So um, in the bottom right where it says, it's okay to be where you are, it's just not okay to stay there. I think that's true for adults and for kids. And that's what your PLN can do for you, help you move along. Okay, for teachers, for the physical climate, um, I, I, like I said, again, uh, the, I, wish, I wish I had flexible seating. It's my dream. Um, I'm working towards that. It says, what do, you, what do you see when you work in and what do you wish you could change? The first thing I look at is organization and accessible materials. If the kids needed to count money, do they know where they can go get it? If the kids needed to measure something, do they know where they could go get it? Do they know where the silent reading books are and where the parts of the library are? So I, my room is far from perfect, trust me. Far, but I'm always working trying to see what would make this smoother and easier for kids and make it easy enough that they would actually go and use it and do it instead of like, nah, I don't want to find it. So I'm working all the time. My classroom library needs, needs a little work right now. <laughs> so that would be one of my next goals. Um, student furniture. I know I give an option in my room to stand up and um, we know when worse comes to worse, you do what you can. So we have these science tubs with all these science um, um, equipment in it. And it's like just one of those, I don't know, 18 inches by two feet or whatever tubs. If they put that on the counter or they put that on their desk, their Chromebook will sit right on top of it. And there's a little groove in the top of the lid so it can't slide back and forth. I'm a stand up, move around kind of person. So while I don't have cute couches and all the awesome little rolly chairs or or stools, I try to give as many options as I can in my room. And people will take me up on it and they will go. So we are testing um, ISTEP. We did it two days this week and four days next week. And I have that option for some. If you're taking a 67 minute test, there's no way I could take that sitting down. So with what I have, I try to give them options and standing up is always one of the options. They can move it to the side and sit back down for a while put their Chromebook back out on top and finish. And the room decor, colorful and inviting but not overwhelming is what I try to go by. I want them to use, I use most of my walls as tools for anchor, anchor charts. So that's where I hang my anchor charts so that they can refer to them. And it's not just all cutesy decorations. And I have some borders that I like and some things up that I have a wall where it's um, the stations and who's in which station and where they're rotating. Then some in the back is where anchor charts um, hang, so they can refer to those for math, writing, or reading. And uh, those get used a lot. So I would hope if I, we paid attention to those things and had it that easy for the kids and for us, that would help our climate. I would feel better walking into my room. I know you've had those days where you leave, you're like, I'm leaving, and you come back and there's a mound on your desk, and you're like, oh, why did I do that? Um, I've done that a bunch of times, so I try to have that cleared off, so when I walk in, I'm thinking, okay, ready to start, I've got it. Um, as far as the PLN at the bottom, I know you people think about the um, coworkers in your building, 
and hopefully that's a positive thing and people work as a team. Um, people do have dis different personalities, so sometimes there's only so far you can go, but making the best of that, encouraging other people. I like to share new ideas with other people. I'm kind of known as a tech nerd in my building. So if our tech guy is there only two and a half days a week, if he is not in the building, they will call <laughs> They will call me, and it's just like self-taught stuff. I, I'll go down there and troubleshoot till I get it, or, I'll, or Google it till I get it. So that's kind of a funny thing um, to have. But um, administration, um, I'm sure we have all worked under a million different kinds of administration. You just have to make it work for you. Um, whether you're in a thriving place where the, the administrator is encouraging and helpful and has a lot of resources, or they're more hands-off. You have to make it work for you. And that is where I rely on that bold-faced one, um, online contacts and collaborators. I, I can't say enough about Twitter because it changed who I meet, who I collaborate with, things I've learned. And I know a lot of people see it as, I can't do one more thing. I'm so busy. Twitter is one more thing. I can't do it. But if you used it just right, it's an amazing amazing um, chance for this uh, free professional development with these incredible forward-thinking genius people and I just hop along in for the ride. So I'm so blessed to have met, like I think I met both Paula and um, Nancy in the first 70 tweets or something. I'm just so blessed that I stumble on these people and uh, feel a connection and I'm able to work with them. So I rely a lot on that. Uh, we're in a small town and th we're kind of we're learning all the time, but I feel like sometimes we're kind of a little bit behind because we kind of stay and do the same thing. So that's been great. Um, parents are a good one. Uh, our school has an 88% poverty rate, and some of them are parents who are great and come in and help and support and go on field trips and send in things. That's another part of it. Do you, do you feel supported by the parents? If the parents know how you are with their kids, and how you're teaching them to be leaders and how you're encouraging strengths that everyone has, then they want to support that and come in that. And they say, my kid comes home happy every day and they can't wait to come to school the next day. So parents are also a, a very big support um, for your learning network. Uh, I made this little graphic and um, I just want to draw attention to the biggest thing on there is student experience. I, I am constantly thinking, how will my kids do this? Will they, how will they learn best? How will they enjoy the experience and learn at the same time? Um, I, I have all those other little pieces in there that are so important. And um, my kids at school were asking me about, I told them I had gotten up one morning and worked on this slideshow, and they wanted to see it. So I showed it to them. So they added a couple things to this for me. Um, they added, they're the ones that added support. I thought that was very interesting of them. Um, they added teamwork, and they wanted me to put tools on there. Um, I'll show you in a minute a, a, one of the walls in my classroom where we have um, tech as tools that they are really proud of and they enjoy very much. So they helped me add a few bubbles to this, and I just thought teamwork, support, and tools. How smart are the kids? <laughs> pretty, pretty smart kids. So I wanted to include that and give them a little shout out because they helped me. Here's the Classroom Champions page and another way to have a support system. So Classroom Champions is an organization started by Steve Messler and his sister. And what it, he was an Olympic athlete. He was one of the four gold medalists in bobsled in 2010 when they hadn't won in 60 years. And he would visit a classroom and leave and think, well, I don't even know if my visit made a difference. So their idea was to pair an Olympic athlete or Paralympic athlete with a classroom for a whole year. And they would communicate by video chats. So each month is a different theme or lesson. And as I said before, one of those was perseverance. And that month, we heard all kinds of stories about an athlete who, who um, you know, broke her both legs. She was a skier, and she made a comeback. But we talked about in our own lives perseverance. So I love this program because it has life skills. Each month we do goal setting. We do, um, you can see it on our classroomchampions.org page. 
every month they have a different life, I, I think they're life skills, they call them themes or lessons, and uh, it always makes a difference in my kids. Now you do have to have, or in the past, have had to have a certain poverty rate to be able to apply because they were going for high risk or high need kids in the beginning. Um, over on the left, you can see Meryl Davis and Charlie White. We were paired with them while they won the Olympic gold. And the next chat we had with them, here they are taking pictures of us. So it's just our classroom and those two. And Meryl said, oh, I've got to get my camera out. I've got to get a picture of you. So my kids are at the bottom holding up signs. Then they took out their gold medal. And they asked Charlie to bite it. So he, Charlie bit down on his gold medal. And they just thought that was amazing. Um, one little tech thing that was funny is um, we were going to watch the gold medal match. It was like our gold medal dance. It was like at 1.30. Internet for the corporation goes down. So I'm like, we are watching this live. So my daughter's at home. She's a high schooler, and she was sick. I said, you have to turn on the program, get on your phone on Skype. I'll get on my phone on Skype. I laid it under the dock cam, and I plugged my speakers in because <laughs> you can't give up. It's part of our perseverance. And by golly, we watched it live. So that was a really great experience. Um, over on the right, come in the middle of the picture, you see Lex, Lex Gillette and my kids in the background in that selfie. He's a Paralympian long jumper. He can jump 22 feet. And so we were able to do, in the picture below, a beacon project with him with Google Glass, where we were able to have a map of his Chula Vista um, practice facility. And we set it up so the beacons would talk to the glass so he could walk around campus and know where he was by the beacons on the glass. And that was like an unbelievable experience that we, we just loved. And we actually won a contest, and he was able to come to our school. So we're all great, big Lex Gillette fans. Um, at the end of it, my kids wrote letters to him. And we had the specialist from the district bring her Braille machine over. And they were able to type their notes to him in Braille so that when he came, he sat down and he read their letters in Braille. And he still texts me, like we're, because we, we did a lot of things together, and he says, I take that book with me. Because I read, it's kids writing, kids that I helped, kids that I communicated with. So it's so inspiring when he is as touched as we are. Like that, that was just an experience that um, I, I wouldn't trade back. So I am lucky to be in this. Um, actually, this weekend there's a conference in Calgary. And they invite teachers to come. And I wasn't able to come this year, but I've been to that twice. And it's an amazing experience. Again, intelligent, amazing, sharing educators coming together and saying, what's going to make this better for kids? And this is one of the ways. They don't really have a lot of um, emotional curriculum for kids. And this is my way. So we will figure out a way. Like right now, Lex said, can you have them keep a three-day log? It was healthy living this month. So we used Google Sheets to organize that. And we wrote a reflection in Google Docs by looking at our data. What do we need to do? Do you need to sleep more? And then they created a video on Flipgrid so that he can hear them all read those reflections about their logs. So that's how I'm getting my tech in, too. Like I will attach it to something else and blend it in. And this is definitely one of the greatest things that I have ever been able to be a part of. So. I thank Classroom Champions and um, thank Steve Messler and Lee Parisi for giving this opportunity. And I, if you have any questions about that, you can send it to me later. So I want to talk about, I told you I was a tech nerd, and um, proudly so, um, Skype and GHO going global. Um, here, just a, I went through my Twitter feed, and I just copy and pasted some of those in here. Um, on the top left is we. this girl took us on a laptop around the Roald Dahl Museum in England. Um, next to that is a park ranger, Yellowstone Park Ranger, and we got to ask questions of her. And she talked about that. There's a mom and, and little student from South Korea where we did a mystery Skype. I'm sure you've all heard of mystery Skypes. If you haven't, you should look those up. You, you ask yes or no questions with another class and try to guess where they are. So that was a bunch of fun. Um, in the middle is a paleontologist. He's holding up some bones. And I found that if you put it out on Twitter, people are pretty quick to answer your questions and get involved. I found this giant moth in my yard one time. I took a picture, and I put it on Twitter with the hashtag entomologist. 
and a graduate student from one of the classes so, um, at a college wrote back and said, "This is what this is," da, 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 and he did a Skype with us. He he didn't he didn't have the opportunity to connect with kids. So because he answered this question about my moth, he became our expert entomologist, and he we reached out and he answered right away. So that's been a great experience. The author there's an author over there on the right. Um, there's a um, penguin scientist on the very right hand side who goes to Antarctica, and she'll actually take her laptop down to where the penguins are and sit down and the penguins will just walk around her and you can hear them and you can see them and you can see the um, sometimes the eggs, sometimes the babies and watch them being fed and one time a little bit of horror when <laughs> uh, the bird of prey who preys on them came by and um, took one of the babies but you know it's live so you get what you get, <laughs> get what you get and they explained we're not allowed to interfere, we can't stop nature. So that's always an experience. And um, they, one time we were on the camera with them, they even came up and they were pulling on her shoestring while she was sitting there. That's how close they, they would get to her. So you can, it's a great experience. And then NASA, and then there was this uh, Bemini shark girl who is a shark expert. Literally, whatever topic your kids are interested in, there's a way to find someone connected to that. Even when you just say, so if I, if I, my PLN doesn't know it or I just decide one night late at night to put on that, it's amazing that was the correct hashtag, how you can come connected to people. I, I just find that to be like mind blowing. <laughs> so um, I would encourage you to use, and it's kind of become a interchangeable Skype, GHO, and there's lots of other video chats on there. Um, I do want to point out there's a thing called Skype in the classroom. And if you log into that, there are choices on there of, of people that you can connect with and they'll put you together and then that expert, there's, so there's an expert that's been on there and saying, hey, I can do this presentation and they kind of connect those presenters with classrooms. So definitely looking up uh, Skype in the classroom is a great idea. So here's part of my technology as a tool um, and I just put different things. I don't want people to think like this just happens all at once by ma uh, magic. Like I've been a tech nerd for a long time so I'll get used to a program and maybe uh, Jerry will tweet out about something and then I'll go try that one. And I try new ones and I have to stick with what fits for me. So I won't just go try anything. I'm thinking how can I use this? What will be happening? And um, so you need to look at all of those things before you just go choosing those. So I put some on here that are tried and true for me that the kids have enjoyed. Um, I'm a big Google fan because all of it is free right now. So <laughs> we use every part of that. And I'm, I'm looking for the picture of my, my wall that has all the tech um, tools on it. Might be, no, I don't know if I see it. But um, so on my board, if as soon as we used Google Sheets, I would put a Google Sheets sign an example and I would have a student go into Seesaw and type what they think Google Sheets could be a tool for, what we used it for. And I would print it and cut out that blurb written by a student and put it beside the Google Sheets um, sign. And then if we used a Padlet, and um, here I used it like make, tw make 48 three different ways. So you could have words, you could have problems. So when they learned that, I would say, who would like to go and see saw and write it? So a couple people would. I would go print them out. I would hang them on the wall. This is how our kids use Padlet. So it was them explaining in their words. Oh, Nancy said it was one of the earlier ones. Maybe I'll try to go back in a second. Um, and um, they would explain how it all went. So all the tools are on there. If somebody walks in and says, oh my gosh, what is a GHO? Those kids know how to explain it. And that means that it... Um, it meant something to them and they they see it as a tool. Here's how I know I could use that next time. Here's how I know I could do it. So Kahoot down there at the bottom, I'm sure you've all played that. We have fun. Paula's really great at like trying to get three or four classrooms together and then doing a little review or the Oreo challenge or um, something together. Flipgrid is something new that we started that the kids really like. I, I'm a little late on that um, bandwagon I think, but I'm still trying it out when I can. And um, the kids really enjoyed that because they could see each other. So those are just some of my favorite tools. Um, most of them are free right now, or they have a version that is free. So that's good to know. So I'm always thinking about 
what's best, what's next, what can help the kids. And I love it because they think of that. Because I'll say, okay, we're going to have an assignment on um, uh, Washington, D.C. That was one of ours. And they'll say, can I do a Google Doc? Yeah. Can I do Google Slides? Yes. Can I make a palette with pictures? Yes. Like they choose. They're so used to these tools now. They choose. So um, on the right-hand side, I had made a QR code from my school. And there's a custom QR code. I see they put the link in there. The QR code is actually in the middle. And then I am a photographer too, but I did it in Photoshop. And I just, all of that on the claws and around that QR code, that's just gibberish that I cut and pasted from places. And then I just erased the outline so it was left with the bare paws. So if you, they have that on our note cards and on our newsletter. And if you scan that, it will take you to um, our website where people can check, check those things. OK, I see it. It's on slide eight. Should I really quick if I just go to slide eight for a second? I just, oh, here it was. Here's the wall. On the top right, do you see where I have like the Skype and the um, Google Drive and the classroom? We, we did Google Keep. All of these things, there's Padlet and Seesaw, amazing programs. So anybody can walk in and ask one of the kids how to use it and um, enjoy that. OK. Um, when I gave my speech for uh, Teacher of the Year, which I was, I was um, like just so honored and didn't know what to do with myself when I got that. But I wanted to give people there some very simple things that um, kids are kids are really smart, and it's not always top down. So if there's an idea in my room, I don't care if it's the youngest person or the oldest person. If it's a good idea, then we're going to try it or we're going to do it. So. I gave them some advice that I've heard my kids talk about or that we've talked about together. Um, be flexible. The second one's a big deal. Uh, focus on the big picture. The, the little tiny things aren't worth getting upset over. Let's look at big picture. Are we making progress? Listen. Listen to kids. Listen to your colleagues. Just stop for a minute and listen to that. You might, you might learn some amazing things. I'm a big talker, too. I like to talk a lot, but I always feel like I know when I can like turn it off and become the listener and the learner. I think that's important to know. Um, let mistakes be part of the process. Uh, the kids would crack you up because um, I would say, um, what, what's, that, what's true about mistakes? They're like, just keep going. I said, does everybody make mistakes? They're like, yes. I'm like, even me? And they're like, yes, because it happens. Some things just don't work out, but you can't let that stop you. So. If mistake is part of the process, readjust, ch check on that mistake, and move on. Um, allow kids to take the lead. They think of good ideas. I, I might think of half of something, and I'll walk by, and the kids will say, hey, we went ahead and did this. What do you think? I'm like, OK, go, to, go tell everybody else about it. Let's put it under the doc cam. You be the teacher. You explain it. And they, they come up with really amazing things. They're only 9 or 10 years old. but. Be a leader. What you say matters. I listen to you, too. If it's a good idea, help find them. Now you're the expert in that. <laughs> so when someone has a question, I'm going to send them to you. So they like that. Um, growth mindset, Just taking baby steps. If you only use one technology program now, maybe try to work another one in. And then just concentrate on those two until you have um, you know, confidence in that or you have an idea of how to share that. Um, kids know kids know a lot, so I've told them not everybody's at the same place, but you've got to move <laughs> forward. Are we better than we were yesterday? Yes. And the last one, uh, kindness comes first always. Um, I've been reading Wonder since it came out, and I, I love the phrase when given the choice between being right and being kind, choose kind. And I, I have sort of a, a sentimental heart like that. So it's very, very easy for me to always just say, OK, let's, let's, let's just do the kind thing. And trying to watch kids learn that and practice that has been amazing. So I love pointing out when I see that happening in the room. And so I have these kids to a place where they are leaders and they're kind. You know, they're kids, so I'm not, they're not perfect all the time. But for the most part, when you hear it from special teachers or subs or bus drivers, then you know what you're doing is helping. Because those kids are making impressions on other adults. 
Um, I want to talk before, about fourth chat. I saw in there to talk about that. Uh, someone was asking before I finished this part, but uh, fourth chat, I was thrilled and scared and didn't know what to do when Paula and Nancy asked me to join fourth chat as a moderator. And I cannot wait for Monday nights because somebody, somebody, something always happens, and I'm always saying, wow, I can't believe I get to be here. I can't believe these get to interact with these people, and it's new people and people who come back. But feeling a part of that with those two girls, and you heard Paula at the beginning saying um, my enthusiasm. So Paula, Paula is the usually organizer and has the questions ready, and Nancy's always putting resources on, and I'm like the greeter and the helper and the, hey, how are you? And I ask questions of people. I'm a learner by nature. That's the name of my, my new blog I started. But I want to know, how, how did you think to do that? Or what did you want to know? So we work really well as a team together. And if, if two are on that night and one person can't make it, uh, we all help each other out. But that has been really a game changer. And it, and it happened so early that I don't know if I know what Twitter would really be like without it because I was so blessed to find those people early and become a part. I, I can only just say that of all the things, of all the Web 2.0 um, tools, Twitter started me out on this unbelievable journey that I just couldn't be more grateful for. So um, I just I just wanted to make sure I pointed that out, that that, that has been such a big part, and it, and it is of me now. So I. I'm always talking with them, got these ideas, and it, it can be better. It just inspires me. So when I'm thinking, oh my gosh, at school, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this? I'm like, well, I'll just, I'll just put on 4Chat. Somebody will help me out, or I want to share this with the group. So that's been very, very great. So um, on this page, this was another thing that I said at my um, acceptance. I think they posted a link to the video. It's like three minutes long or something, but... I really loved um, this. It says, we aren't teaching academics and numbers. We're teaching kids to love learning, have a growth mindset, think critically, and work together. Okay, those are all life skills in my book. Those are all life skills that I, I just think they're priceless, and you can't live without them. So I don't, I don't like skip the curriculum, but I always find a way to blend that in as much as I possibly can. And I'm very lucky because that's a part of who I am that part, like, let's work together, and can't you wait to learn this, and are you better than yesterday? Like, that's a, that's easy for me to do. Um, I don't, and everybody has different personalities, so you're going to have to think if that was something you need to, you know, you need to work on, or you could get better at, but the kids, it sure makes a difference. So that last line says, how we set the climate in the learning setting matters. It matters. It matters how the desks are. It matters where the, where, if the if things are accessible, where the kids' desk, how do they feel? Are they, do they feel like you're giving all the information top down, or are they part of the learning process? Uh, that's, those are all things that we need to think about. And especially the kids at my school are coming from some, some of them are coming from some rough households, and they're happy to get there to school. And they're happy to get there and find something and latch onto it and learn it. So I leave plenty of room for students to say, hey, I, I have this tangent. Can I work on this sometime at school? Because they don't have internet at home. Absolutely. We're going we're to make time for that. We do get our standards done. We do have state testing. You know, we have all those parameters that are put on teachers um, as stressors. So you controlling the climate is something you do control. So. That would be my advice to uh, people is like how you set the climate for in all those ways for students and for yourself and for yourself does matter. So the last um, page, there's a quote, AJ Giuliani, um, our job is not to prepare students for something. Our job is to help prepare, help students prepare themselves for anything. So when they leave my room, I say to them, I will miss you terribly. But you have what you need. Go on. Build on that. Do more. So I think um, we got to send them out there ready, knowing that they know how to handle it. They know what tools they have. They know how to treat each other. And I, I wish it was a perfect world. I know they're not going to all stay like that. But for my little vision and my little four walls, <laughs> let's make this happen. Let's share it with other classrooms. Let's connect with other people and, and, uh, and 
just have that love of learning and how you work together. So hopefully you all um, have that kind of climate in your room or will encourage that kind of climate in your room and for yourselves. And I thank you all for listening. And again, thank you for having me on Classroom 2.0 Live. And uh, Paula for inviting me. I, I am ready to turn it back over to the handlers. Thanks so much, Jen. I was able to capture some questions. If you have any others, okay. you can. If those in the room can type them in chat, and I'll ask them. Okay. So let's go back to the beginning of my list. Are many other teachers in your school connected on Twitter, and what sets apart other teachers you work with who are most open to using Twitter to build a PLN? Okay, right. Our I told you our community is pretty small. I think we have mm -hmm. 22,000 in our town. There are not many teachers in my building on Twitter for PD. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's another third grade teacher, and I talk to her all the time, and she would take her kids to special and I would pick mine up right after so I'd be like, okay, what did you think about this or what do you think about Twitter and she was very good at that but it's not very many because they see it as one more thing. I, I can't, if anybody can help me on that, I can't get them to get over the hump of thinking, oh my gosh, I'm so busy, I can't do one more thing. Mm -hmm. And how they, they don't view Twitter as a tool, they think it's just another social media. Mm. Okay. What are some of your tips for adding books to your classroom library? Money is always a challenge. Money is always a challenge. Yeah, um, my son goes to a different school, mm -hmm. so sometimes we'll ask for the, school, the books that their library is getting rid of, mm -hmm. the school asset book clubs I try to keep track of. Um, retired teachers sometimes will leave books to you, so if you know somebody in your buildings that re you're retiring, generally they'll donate those. Mm -hmm. um, if you Ask them just right. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. We don't have a lot of, we have title, um, our whole building is title three. So mm -hmm. title one and title three actually, but uh, sometimes our literacy coach, if we ask her like, can we really have these books, she can get them and loan them to you and then keep them in her library. Mm How do you manage your parent support? Um, I wish I could say I did that. that. Tools or forms or I remind, but I I don't have I can't get all of them to sign up. I need to, mm -hmm. I, what I would like to do next time is have them on an open house night and mm -hmm. sign up while they were there, because it, parents kind of see that as a one more thing too, like oh I can't just do one more thing I'm so busy with my life. So I'm a good communicator with uh, phone calls or notes in the agenda or um, having parents come in. When we did have our parent-teacher conferences, ours were student-led. So they had um, folders in Seesaw. Mm -hmm. So they would put in math and all of those. And I said, now, if you have pieces that you want to show your parents at night, I created a new tag or folder called Blue Ribbon Work. So you might have 20 things in your math and 20 things in your ELA, but you might only Blue Ribbon you know, six or seven, so that's what you show your parents that night. And that's a great communication tool. Again, student is the leader. Student mm -hmm. knows what they've been learning. Parents are like, oh my gosh, I, I can't believe you know all that and had all that ready. So that's been a great thing, having the parents come in during conferences and letting the students lead that. Sure. Yeah. Any magical tips for how to get students to understand and accept that mistakes are okay? I think it's the way the teacher handles it and how you monitor how the other students handle it. Mm -hmm. By, um, you know, bullying can be very subtle and sometimes bullies are the ones that can do it while the teacher is in the room but has no idea. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm a big proponent in my classroom of body language. So if I say, Peggy, will you be my partner? And your shoulders sag and you roll your eyes but you say the word yes, you didn't really say yes. Mm -hmm. Because your body language said no, and your body language speaks louder than your words. So we actually have talked about body language and how if someone asks you, that means they see something in you, and you need to accept that and go with them for different people. So I think it's um, watching for mistakes and how the people nearby or other people or even you handle that. 
I think that would be, you know, asking, you know, would you do that differently next time? Guys, you think they'll be able to get it next time if they're going to do the change, make the change? And just always constantly keeping it, you know, on the table so people aren't afraid. And, um, you know, again, kids are kids. It doesn't, it doesn't always work. Sometimes things work for two weeks, and then you've got to think of something new. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so how do you put all of your classroom resources together that you share with parents and public? Are they in multiple locations? What works best? <laughs> well, getting this presentation together helped me think of a lot of that a little bit differently. I do mm -hmm. love live finders, but I can't say it's in one place. And I've mm -hmm. started at Google Sites, but it's still a work in progress. So I'm kind of revamping a little bit for mm -hmm. the um, new blog, Learner by Nature, and then the new Google Site. But I can't say it's finished. I'm hoping by next year that would be an easy place to go. And again, if you teach the kids how to do it, they'll teach the parents. Mm -hmm. So I say, why would you need to go to my Google Site? And they know it's because of these three things. That's what gets the parents going. Mm -hmm. Can you share more about Osnobot and why you yes. included it in your list of favorite tech tools? Yeah, I, I'd be happy to. Uh, sometimes being the tech nerd gets you um, to be a test class. So uh, uh -huh. I know. I, <laughs> so if I'm helping out my tech guy when he's not in the building or whatever, and I, you know how you got to know the people. So they were very nice. And actually, this this summer they're starting an elementary robotics camp. Mm -hmm. I have taught at the middle school robotics camp for two years, so this time the superintendent called and said, hey, we're going to have this. Can you pick out some tech tools to have for this camp? So again, I asked my PLN, I asked the, the uh, tech coordinator, we talked a little bit, and they have ordered these things. So my students are guinea pigs right now. Mm -hmm. But I want to tell you, for people afraid of tech, here's what happened. We opened a box, and I've never seen an Ozobot before. Mm -hmm. I go to the Ozobot website. But they have a one-minute video on how the Ozobot works. So I play the one-minute video, and I stop. Everyone's in partners. I'm like, OK, see what you can learn. And within four minutes, they're like, hey, it also does this. <laughs> hey, it also does this. So we start making a list. OK. Uh -huh. So again, I've never worked with an Ozobot. So I show another one-minute clip. Same thing mm -hmm. happens. So mm -hmm. I said to the teacher across the hall, I'm like, you have to take this box of stuff. And she goes, I don't know what it is. I said, here's the website, mm -hmm. and here's what you do. We were both amazed. By the end, they were coding. I don't know if you can see mm -hmm. on that paper, that, but there's colored lines. And if you go across a certain mm -hmm. set of colored lines, it turns around, or it changes colors, or they taught themselves. Wow. So I'm providing a safe environment. I have video clips from the company. And I'm not saying I always do that, but when I'm new to it, mm -hmm. the kids just like start learning that. And then two groups have moved together. And if they push these certain things on the sides, they dance together toward each other. I'm like, you guys are just amazing. <laughs> so sure. that is how I got lucky enough. Those aren't even mine. Those uh, belong to the tech people, but mm -hmm. I'm happy to have them. The other one I would mention is called Edison. And um, it's just probably just edison.com, but it's a little, uh, maybe three inch by three inch little slab that has Lego things on the top that you can add Legos to. Mm -hmm. And it's the same kind of thing. She and I had never seen it before. The tech guy suggested it. So it's a video, one minute. What can you do after that one minute video? <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, you know, I, you gotta, you gotta be safe with what you pick. It, you mm -hmm. can't, it can't be all top down. If I provide the, the resources, and I say to them all the time, whose job is, whose job, who's in charge of your learning? They'll say we are. I'm like, why am I here? You say you give us the tools. If you mm -hmm. walk in mm -hmm. right now and ask them that, this is exactly what they would say. So I'm mm -hmm. at least minimally helpful. I give them the tools, right? <laughs> right. But, um, that's, that's, you don't have to be the expert at it. That's, that's true with uh, a lot of those programs that we talked about. You don't have to be the expert. Just start with baby steps. You know, growth mindset. I didn't know anything about Ozobot. Hey, I watched a one-minute clip. I know a little bit now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's how we work it. Going on with the Ozobot, somebody else asked something about connecting it to mass concepts. Was oh, absolutely. That? Uh, we're going to look at that for the summer uh, class. Um, if they have ideas, tell them to email mm -hmm. me because I would love to work with someone on that um, with math concepts and coding concepts because those mm -hmm. can actually be coded. Mm -hmm. And there's an iPad app where you put it actually on the iPad screen. And there are things on the screen that you can do. Mm -hmm. So part of that is going to be coding. But um, yeah, we would love ideas about doing that with math. If someone has done that or 
Um, I see somebody created an a map for Oregon Trail using Oswatch. That is like genius. See, <laughs> see, look. Here's what happens. Like, you you asked me to come and talk, and now I'm looking at everybody else's stuff, going, "That's awesome. Oh man, that's awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to read the chat later." <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Do, do your students like Kahoot more than quizzes? Uh, they have, but I don't know if it's because I've used it more. Uh -huh. Or because the experience that they've had. Like when I was with Paul and we did Oreo Challenge, okay, mm -hmm. like they associate that with Kahoot. <laughs> like Oreos okay. and, you know what I mean? Oreos and Kahoot, yeah. But I've used Kahoot way more than I have used quizzes, but I would, I would like to look into that more. Okay. Yeah. Are you presenting anywhere in Indiana? Um, I want to, um, I, I really haven't done a lot of this. And, um, it's hard to understand. Like you think, oh, everybody's probably doing the same thing I'm doing. But then you read the very nice thing Peggy George put all my information together, and I looked at that and I thought, well, yeah, there, you know some stuff, right? So I would love to um, present at the ICE conference in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm, I'm hoping I can do that, but right mm -hmm. now I'm not. But I would be happy to if, if someone saw the need or had an idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, will, will you be going to ISTE in Chicago this year? I am. I'm going. Let's all meet up. <laughs> I would love to. I um I have a chance. It's within driving distance for me. It's like four hours, a little more than four mm -hmm. hours. And um, I think I get to stay with Nancy Carroll, who's going from her district. So that would be uh, mm -hmm. another reunion and a chance to just walk around that place in awe and meet up with people. We, we, we met so many amazing people, people that wrote the app for Padlet, people that wrote the app for Remind. I mean, just, mm -hmm. it, they're, and they're just genius people just walking around wanting to share with people. Like it's so amazing. I don't know, some, not necessarily where I work, but some people in your buildings are like, no, that's my idea, or don't do that, that's mm -hmm. my idea. And, and you feel like that stuff on toes, where I'm like, if it's a good idea for kids, who, let's everybody do it. Let's do it. Yes. Build on it. You you take my idea sure. and then build on it and then come back and tell me so we see, you know, how it goes. So what are your favorite ways or we did that one, I'm sorry. What are your favorite ways to use seesaw with your students now? Two questions I, the same way. Yes. I the kids have taken the seesaw so well because they can control it and they understand it and they can mm -hmm. comment on other people's. And we've talked about using texting language and using how you would comment in a professional setting on other people's. And the mm -hmm. people who don't want to be on camera or something just cover the camera. They know how to do that or do just the audio. Mm -hmm. And again, the tags make that priceless because you can organize as you go. And I, I keep telling them, don't get in a mess later where you have everything spread out. Like some days I feel like that. <laughs> like start now. Mm -hmm. Organize it. So those folders. And, and um, being able to share with each other and h listen to each other. Mm -hmm. I think that's important that the kids are allowed to hear each other and what they say. So if they do something on um, sharks and somebody puts a video in and they want to go watch that. And um, we, when we were using Flipgrid, they had written the Google Doc and they couldn't have the windows open side by side because when I would hit press record on Flipgrid, they couldn't see their Google Doc. So I had taught them side by side and they said, okay, this, this strategy won't work. So I said, okay, we're going to have to figure something else out. Two minutes later, someone raises their hand. If you copy your entire um, piece from Google Doc and you put it in the chat window that's right beside your face when you're recording, then you just look right at that and then you read it off the screen. <laughs> I'm like, genius. All right, your friends, yes. go to the front of the room. Please yeah. tell everybody. Yeah. <laughs> students did that. Great. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I mean, like, I'm helping people and I can't think and do it at the same time and then a hand will go up and they're like, I mm -hmm. got it. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay. Do so you yeah, have a thousand valuable? Great. Do you have a specific time every day that you ask students to reflect on their learning, or did it just do it just as it comes up during the day? I I usually just do it just as it comes up. I don't have a formal like I use exit tickets sometimes and I, little things sometimes. But I don't have a formal in the moment mm -hmm. for me and how my personality works it seems to be best. Mm -hmm. Plus, I, I don't forget things that way <laughs> yeah. when it comes up. Now, that was intentional, a reflection piece they wrote about their three-day log for Lex, Gillette, from mm -hmm. Classroom Champions. Like, that mm -hmm. was an intentional assignment that we had that um, 
I can't say that every day. It's usually thumbs up, thumbs down. How'd you think math was today, guys? Thumbs up, okay, okay, with a flat hand, or like thumbs down, like there are quick ways like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, do you have student digital portfolios? Yeah, that's what we use our Seesaw for, to organize that and, and Google Drive. So they have uh -huh. both places now that they can do it. Seesaw is just a little different. We can make folders within folders for Google Drive, but I feel like Seesaw is like blue is always classroom champions and green is always, you know, like whatever the, the, um, the you know, the key means, what the colors are. So I feel like it's easier uh -huh. to organize in there. Okay. Those were the questions I was able to capture and I didn't see any others in the yeah. chat. If anyone else has a question for Jen, you can type type it in the chat, although we are running a little long. I didn't I'm sorry. I tried That's to okay. pay. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> but when you're excited about when you're so excited about things, mm -hmm. it's hard. That's so, right, it is. So I want to thank everybody that attended and Introducing and organizing all the work. Peggy George had to call and say, "Hey, do you have or you know talk with me? Do you have this? Here's this document." Mm -hmm. She walked me all the way through it. Paula had a lovely introduction. I'm sure you you guys have all worked at this, and it was such a pleasure for me. So I just want to make sure you all know I am so grateful. So I appreciate the opportunity very much, and for the people that took an hour out of their day on a Saturday for coming by, thank you also. It was a pleasure. Yes, thanks so much for for doing your presentation for us today. I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy, who will tell us what's coming up next. Thank you so much, Jen. That was everything I hoped for, and even more. I love the Q&A time and all of the great questions and the great examples and stories you shared with us. What a way to start our weekend. Thank you. And we do have some great shows coming up, and I'm going to go through this real fast because I know we're over time. So please join us every week, even though there are a couple of dates there that aren't finalized yet, you know they're going to be great. And next week we have the amazing Matt Miller, that's that textbook star. Um, he's going to talk to us about 10 things to ditch in education and what you can do instead. So he's not going to leave us hanging. And we're going to have Sarah Malchow um, doing a session on global collaboration with lots of online experiences. She is an amazing teacher too. So join us for that. And then keep checking back. Follow our hashtag Live Class 2.0, and um, our posts on Facebook and everywhere you can so that you know what's coming up. And we'll update our website as we go along, too. Thank you all for joining us today. Thanks, Peggy. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Hargett on Slatus. He's gathered all his PD resources in one place, including host your own webinar, where you can sign up for a collaborate session. And if it's open to the public, it's free. You can nominate a featured teacher for the month at this particular website or from within the Live Finder. Um, each month we have a featured teacher like Jen was today. The video collections on iTunes U and on YouTube. As you exit the session, the survey link should open. You can also take the link from the chat or from within the Live Binder. And at the bottom of the survey, you can request a professional development certificate. And it prints out with your name. And these get to you and your name on the certificate. So all thanks to Patty Ruffin. Um, please, though, use a personal email address for these and not a school. Schools tend to block these from getting to you. Special thanks again to our special guest, Jennifer Reg Ruth to Steve Hargadon, founder of Classroom 2.0, Future of Education and the Learning Revolution, to Blackboard Collaborate for our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in the show today. Thanks so much for coming. <laughs>